Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about for each loops now. I haven't taught for each loops yet because they're most often used with arrays and array lists, and we haven't learned them until now. And so let's look at an array. So I've created an array with five elements in it, and we're going to use a traditional for loop now to parse the array. Let's run this. And you can see I've spit out the elements in the array one per line here. I'm going to show you an alternate way of doing this using something called a for. So this is a regular for loop. And I'm going to show you an alternative now called a for each loop. You notice that in this for loop, the i is the index of each item. Here, the variable item represents each item in the array. There is no index anymore. Also, I don't have to ask the array when it finishes because the for each loop knows to do it until it's finished. So this will be the traditional way. Let me just do it like this so it all shows up on one line. And I'll do the same thing here. And I'll put a space in between the two so that we don't get confused. Okay, this will be a blank line. So I'll print the array once on a single line, and I'll print the array again on a single line. So let's run it. So that's the first time. That's using a regular for loop, and here it is using a for each loop. Now we have to talk about this for each loop. First of all, the first thing you need to understand is that when you reach this colon, you want to say the English word in, say in when you reach the colon. So you're going to say for each integer item in data. See that in data, data is an array. Uh, just so you know, some people are starting to call this for each loop a for in loop. And the reason for that is that there's a new type of for each loop that's come out recently for functional Java. And to avoid confusion, they're starting to call this for in. But on your exam, and pretty much most people out there still refer to this as a for each loop. That's what I'm going to call it for the rest of the year, for each loop. You can see here that I have control over the index. For example, if I wanted to parse this loop backwards, so I'm going to just comment this out for a second so we can talk about just this other one. And let's run it. And you can see I've printed the elements backwards. Look at this one now and see if you can figure out how to print the elements backwards. What do you think? Mr. Sawyer, any idea, sir? No. no, that's because it can't be done. It can't be done because you don't have access to the index. The index is internal, so you can't change the order of the printing. I want to tell you something very important now. This is really important. The most important thing you need to remember about this for each loop is cannot change the elements, uh, order or contents, etc. So this for each loop can only be used to inspect the elements in an array. You can't change the array. Okay, it's not allowed. So you can't like delete the element or swap it with another element in the array or any of that stuff. You can only just look at them. That's all you can do with a for each loop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another array for you. I would like you to use the for each loop now to print all the names. So replace this code. Get rid of this for now. Change the for each loop to print all the names one per line. Please do that now. OK, can you help me write this for in loop? For each loop, sorry. Uh, OK, I think that's it. So let's run it. So you can see it prints them like that. A lot of times you'll see this. So the array will have the plural version, and then you'll use the singular here. It just makes it easy to understand what's happening. You're going to say for each string name in names. If I was to try to do this, it looks like it works. But then later, OK, you can see here that the change did not take hold. So uh, here I gave an example of where the change didn't work. Sometimes it'll be worse and you'll get a runtime error for trying to modify the array, especially if you try to move the elements around or anything like that. So just remember that.
that you cannot change the elements inside a for each loop. 